Torah and Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the Hello everybody, this is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. I want to talk about a topic now because I've been seeing a lot of videos lately about what the Bible says about alcohol and wine and it seems everyone that's doing these teachings, uh, they get a lot of views and the, they seem to be popular teachings, but everyone seems to be in favor of the Bible being okay with alcohol uh, or saying or, or, or coming to the conclusion that uh, it's, it's more than okay to, to consume alcohol. And I have not come up to that conclusion, and uh, people have disagreed with me, but I think uh, Scripture speaks for itself. And we can twist the Scripture or turn the Scripture around to make it seem that it fits our understanding or what we wanted to say. But putting all that aside a second and just thinking about our wonderful Creator and what His plan was for us in the beginning and what His plan will be for us in the end. And his little hints in scripture when he talks about uh, being of our own mind. And when he talks about the special position of the priest. And he talks about uh, the Nazarite vow and, and, and just abstaining from alcohol. And he sets the example with our wonderful Messiah and Yeshua and the purity of him. Uh, and putting all this together, there's no way in my understanding uh, and other people as well that our creator would offer people a substance that would open up the door for the enemy to take control and destroy them and that is exactly what wine does and all alcohol does it opens up the door for the enemy to destroy them there is nothing good that can come out of uh, alcohol or liquor or a strong drink or whatever you want to call it nothing nothing it's like one time I was uh, I was on vacation or I was doing a, a lecture, uh, in uh, a raw food health lecture in Costa Rica. And I was the only believer there. It was just a whole bunch of people running around and getting themselves in trouble. And I had come out of all that and I was subtly trying to give them the good news of Yeshua, but I was teaching them about health. Well, one night it was about 10 o'clock at night and I decided it's time for me to go to sleep. And... Uh, group of guys come and said, Paul, we're going to go to the local club. Do you want to come? The local bar or whatever. I said, absolutely not. And they said, oh, we're just going to go and have a good time. Why don't you want to come? And it's 10 o'clock in a foreign country uh, with a group of guys that aren't from that country. Uh, and I knew there was going to be alcohol involved. And they're in a club with a, a room full of unrighteous people. And my only conclusion was that there's nothing good that can happen in this place tonight. There's nothing good that can happen. I'm not saying necessarily something bad's going to happen, but there's nothing good that's going to happen. And that's my understanding uh, or the conclusion I get with alcohol or liquor. I'm not saying when you drink, you're definitely getting drunk. I'm not saying when you drink, bad things are going to happen. But what I am saying is there's absolutely nothing good that can happen when there's alcohol in your hand or in your body. Nothing. And when you think about what our Creator wanted from the beginning of time and, and who He wanted us to be and the decisions that He wants us to make, I can't imagine He'd ever say, yeah, go ahead and take some alcohol. It's okay. I don't have a problem with that. That's like he, our bodies are, are like a tabernacle, right? And He wants to be clean as possible and, and not let anything evil or wicked get in it, right? Or bad get in it. But we say, well, we're going to take a chance. We're going to take a chance. And a lot of people use the excuse or the idea. And, and you know, wait. So I can go and give everyone all of the scriptures that say not to drink, not to get drunk. You could tell me all of the examples of scripture that say, oh, wine's okay. It says it here, here, and here. But think about it for a second. Just think about that. Uh, a creator originally uh, had this plan for us to be of our own mind. And, and and make these wise decisions based on scripture. So my only conclusion can be there's no way possible that our creator would say, yeah, it's okay. You could take this as substance that's going to uh, make your mind and put it in a different place. And, and, and the excuse I get today or the reasoning I get today is, 
Well, it's okay to drink wine and other alcohol. We just can't get drunk. Listen, folks, I haven't had a drink for over 20 years, probably. Uh, if I took a couple of sips of wine, I'd probably get buzzed, if not drunk. Or well, guess what is buzzed? A little drunk. Uh, but if I slowly but surely took a little bit more sips there each day, each day, I could work up to a point where I could drink a whole cup of wine and not get drunk. Or a whole bottle and not get drunk. You know, if you could drink a whole bottle of wine and not get drunk, you are not blessed. You are you are a functional alcoholic, most likely. You're supposed to get drunk if you drink a fermented drink or juice or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I am under the uh, understanding and belief from my understanding of Scripture and my study of Scripture that there were two things that was called wine, fermented and unfermented uh, grape juice. And I hear the people that support alcohol saying, well, there's no way you could have uh, stopped the fermentation of grape juice, so all grape juice was uh, fermented and it had to be. So wine only meant fermented juice. Then I hear the other side of it where people say, well, they knew how to uh, cool things off and they had old wineskins and new wineskins and all these different things so they could at least slow down the fermentation process or even possibly boil it and destroy the fermentation process where it wouldn't turn into alcohol. So you hear both sides of it. Uh, but let's just let's go to scripture for a moment here. And let's see, because what happened was, you know, people were not able to handle alcohol at first. And we see the first time uh, in scripture, somebody uh, most likely had uh, uh, an alcoholic beverage and, and the way it turned out, okay? Because in the Garden of Eden, our creator had a plan. His plan was for us to eat a vegetarian diet, fruits and vegetables, maybe some nuts and seeds, uh, the green herbs, the the, the, the seeds, uh, the fruit-bearing seeds, and so on. That was his plan, okay? And there was they didn't need rain to water their vegetables to grow. I mean, the, the idea or understanding is it was a, a, a particular atmosphere where the mist came from the ground, and it was almost like a, Yahweh put his own sprinkler system in, and the fruits and the vegetables were being uh, continuously growing, uh, I can't even begin to imagine, uh, with knowing how good and beautiful fruit is today, how amazing it would have been back then. Uh, but everything about these fruits was perfect. Everything was perfect. And uh, then man get kicks out, gets kicked out of the garden, and he's told uh, to till the soil, to work real hard to till the soil. Uh, but everything is not perfect. You see, what happened when man got kicked out of the perfect environment? And we're putting it in an imperfect environment. Uh, everything, whether the enemy used it as a lesson or the enemy used it as a as a as a vice, uh, what was once good has now become bad. And our Creator is in the habit of making things that are bad and turning them to good, right? Or or things that we perceive as bad that actually uh, can be good. But the enemy does the opposite. He takes something good and makes it bad. So I could see in the garden them eating all these fruits and vegetables and and enjoying them and, and the pleasures that come along with this amazing joy of these uh, great tasting uh, produce that was the food for man and sustained man. Then uh, when man get, gets kicked out and now he has to start changing things up. It was never our creator's initial plan during in the garden time for man to be drunk or woman uh they, they just they they things weren't fermenting uh in 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 the garden of eden and and then so they get kicked out of the garden of eden and of course that's where uh a lot of things happened and a lot of things changed but uh, we go and we look uh, and we go all the way back. Uh, you know, we got through history and time and everything else stayed the same. But if we go back and look at the beginning uh, of Genesis and we see uh, about drunkenness, okay, and, and what it was, there was really no definition or difference between uh, drinking wine and being drunk, okay? So if you were one of the first people to drink wine, just like me today, if I'm drinking wine, I'm getting drunk. There's no in between. There's no like, oh, I'm going to drink a cup of wine and not get drunk. It couldn't happen. And and before you became a functional alcoholic, it probably wouldn't have been able to happen for you. And if you gave your little children a, a sip of wine, they'll probably get buzzed or drunk or whatever you want to call it. That's just the way it was. So here you have, and let's look at scripture, the first uh, 
three people to get drunk in scripture and, and, and or, or to drink wine in scripture. Okay, so I would suggest that they didn't know the effects that it was going to have. So they didn't really, uh, they weren't cautious about it. But in fact, they did have effects. There were three uh, people, uh, the first recorded people in scripture to drink wine and also to get drunk were Noah, Lot, and Isaac. These were the first three people in scripture that were recorded. I'm not saying there weren't other people drinking at that time, uh, but these are the first three recorded people. And well, there was one other time as well. well. I'll look at it here in a second, but the first one was Noah. Okay. Uh, so uh, Noah gets off the ark and uh, he has his clean animals, his unclean animals. Uh, he, he has this fruit and he drinks it and he gets drunk. And he gets so drunk that, you know, he doesn't even know that his uh, son is probably sleeping with, uh, with his wife in the tent right next to him uh, or something like this. So, uh, so, so now you got, uh, that's the first time recorded somebody was drunk in scripture. And again, maybe he, he didn't know, maybe he was just doing grape juice before and he didn't know it fermented and what the result was going to be. So be it. The next time now we see uh, the deception coming in, it wasn't somebody getting drunk, it was somebody getting somebody else drunk. We see Lot's, Lot's daughters. Uh, Lot's daughters were, uh, they, they ran out of Sodom and Gomorrah and they wanted to keep the race going, so they got Lot drunk so they could sleep with his daughters. So drunk where he slept with his daughters. And, and then finally we see uh, Isaac. Isaac got so drunk he couldn't tell the difference between his own sons. Uh, and, and these were the first three times it was recorded that people got drunk. Now there was only one other time since 924 where Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine uh, as he was a priest of the Most High God, it said. Uh, so that was uh, one of the first four times it was mentioned in Scripture. Uh, wine and so on. And, 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 and But it, it just got so bad and we don't see anywhere else in scripture the recording of anyone getting uh getting drunk uh all the way uh for the rest of for the rest of the torah at least and then we get into the books of samuel and judges and uh uh we we, we see uh with samson in the book of judges we see the people were drunk and stuff so by this time now it became most likely unlike noah where people didn't know they can get drunk from having ferment uh, fermented wine or bad wine now people knew and they wanted uh, they wanted Samson's uh, head to come, you know, chop it off or kill him or whatever they wanted to do to him. Uh, they wanted to make a mockery of him, and there was this big party with a lot of liquor going around there and everything else. And that's where it led. But let's go and look at Numbers, number six three, the Nazarite vow. The Nazarite vow says, uh, "He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink." And shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor, liquor of grapes, nor eat most grapes or dried. or dried. Now you can get uh, uh, alcoholic beverages from things other than just grapes. Grapes were probably the choice of that day and, and, and the most easiest way to have done it, but you can get alcohol from other things as well. Um, but uh, to, to not even come close to avoiding, uh, to, to, to come close to the topic of getting drunk, not even grapes or anything that comes from a grape. Because these things probably turn uh, quicker than other things. And, they, and not even that. They didn't even want a chance getting drunk. And, uh, you know, it's another topic for another time. But some people would suggest that uh, Yeshua himself took the Nazarite vow and, and, and was unwilling to drink. And some people say, well, it's recorded in Scripture that Yeshua, Yeshua drank. Well, uh, there's uh, other scriptures that... Uh, will refute that saying or that thought uh, that he that he drank wine or an alcoholic beverage. Then you get the whole idea of fermentation and you get the idea of yeast and the different types of yeast. And it, it gets into a whole other topic of, uh, of, of leaven and what that uh, is truly is and truly creates. And now you got to get, get into rabbinical sources of, of what it truly is. Why would somebody ask uh, something like, can we get, well, first of all, can we drink? And then can we get drunk? And people say, well, in the New Covenant, we, had, uh, we have this example of Yeshua uh, serving wine at, at the wedding. So that, that's proof that wine's okay and, and getting drunk is not an issue or whatever you want to say. Uh, 
I haven't heard many people say this, and, and most people will disagree with me. Now, when of course, when people disagree, drink in their hand when they disagree with me. Uh, but I strongly believe, and, and hey, don't. Just if you disagree with me, don't don't discount uh, all the other things I discussed here on this channel. But I believe that it was not wine. The water was not turned into alcoholic wine. The water was turned into grape juice. Uh, I could do another teaching on that. I have many sources of that uh, idea. But I don't believe our wonderful Messiah, who was there at the beginning of time, who 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 knew what the original plan for our Creator was, would uh, come down as a man. And say, these people that are already drunk, I'm going to give them more wine that's ferment fermented and get them even drunker. And get even more dizzy. No, I don't believe that he would do that. And I don't believe he did do that. I believe the, the new wine tasted so great because there's a big difference between the sweet taste of grape juice and the sour taste of wine. I, I, I don't want to say this to upset people, but I want to say this because I believe this is true. I believe... We all have weaknesses, right? So we all have temptations. We all have weaknesses that the enemy knows what they are. And some of you don't want to hear it. Some of you want to deny it. But I do believe alcohol is one of the very ways that people are still kept stuck in Babylon. I believe it numbs them to a certain degree of their reality. It numbs them to a certain degree of, uh, of not only their reality, but um, their relationship with Yahweh. And... And the responsibility that comes along with that. And I'm not saying consciously people are doing this, but I'm thinking subconsciously there's a problem. I don't see any reason why a believer should crave alcohol. And, and the feeling that they get from it, the little tipsy buzz that they might get from it or something else, should be something we should be running from, not running to, and not desiring. And... And I just see it happening more and more and more that, you know, I see it. It's an abundant. It's an abundant. I see people that know the scriptures real well. Their eyes have so, so causally been opened up to Torah. They know they know righteousness. They know the scriptures so well. But not only will they defend alcohol in the scriptures, but they're, they're using it. They're using it. And it's like today I see people the same thing. They're starting to defend marijuana and start using that. And all these things, I believe, are vices that enemies using to keep people trapped in Babylon. You know, pure means pure. And no believer needs to be looking at wine or drinking wine or looking at anything to do with alcohol or anything else that's going to change their mind. And that goes true with, with, with marijuana or anything else people are using to alter their state or alter their mind or whatever. And uh, it's a dangerous thing, and I do think it's of, of the enemy. And um, I'm saying this. I'm saying it wasn't the original's creator, uh, our, our creator's original plan, and it's not his plan at the end times. He wants us to be focused and be ready, because the enemy uh, is is lurking and looking to devour and destroy. He wants us to be uh, focused, so we're not uh, taken by surprise uh, when the end times come and Yeshua is calling us. We're ready and waiting. We got our robe ready to put on. And we're ready to just get up and go. We're not drunk, stumbling to get out the house and answer the call. And uh, we don't know that. This is a great, great thing. We don't know when he's coming, right? We don't know. It says to be ready. To be ready. How are you ready? If you can't even get behind the wheel of your car and drive, how are you ready to go and do the work that Yahweh has for us? So we don't know when he's coming, so we always have to be ready. Always at our best. Always. There's no room for error. This isn't like some little game where, oh, I'll, I'm just going to have a wild weekend. Or I'm just going to drink a little tonight, but I'll be fine tomorrow. No, this is the call of Yahweh. He's coming. He wants us to be at our sharpest. If you were about to do a big business deal, okay, and, uh, and, and and this was it. This was the deal of your life. This business deal. This deal was going to put you over the top. You know, and, and the people are going to come to your house at 9 p.m. And you know they're going to come at 9 p.m. And you're waiting for them. Are you really going to start taking out some alcohol and drinking it? Just think about this for a second. 
Think about what we're doing. Are you going to uh, share it with your children and your family and, and, and stuff? And, and lose your train of thought and your focusness of what's, of what's going on or what's happening? Think about this. You need to be ready and waiting. Watchmen on the wall. Whose house do you think is more protected? The watchman on the wall that's diligently watching for the enemy to attack, to protect his family, or the watchman on the wall that's sitting there drinking a bottle of wine saying, well, at least I'm not getting drunk, it's okay. It's time we took a serious uh, look at this and thought about this. And uh, if you want to justify drinking wine and alcohol is okay according to the scripture, fine, go ahead and justify it all you want. But stop doing it. Justify it all you want, but it's not ideal. It's not going to the extreme for Yah. It's leaving margin for error for just the possibility that your judgment will be a little off. And then, and you got to be ready all the time. So this video is not about justifying if or not wine is, according to the scriptures we decide to use, something that we should be partaking in or not. This video is about being ready for him always. Always. And being alert to our fullest always. That's what it's about. And we need to uh, go to the extreme for our creator. I believe that's what the Torah is about. And I believe what that's the Bible is about. And that's the will for our creator. We go to the extreme. The extreme for him. And, uh, and, and, you know, that, you know that's, that's, look what he's done for us. Why can't we do that for him? Just like when he was there on the stake and he refused the wine. You refuse the wine also. Refuse it. You know, I, I ask people all the time, would you, would you smoke marijuana? If you got on a plane and you knew that the, 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 the captain was smoking marijuana, would you get on that plane? And I said, well, if you got on a plane and, and you saw a, a glass of wine and the captain, the guy that's driving the plane had a glass of wine in his hand. And he said, well, I'm not getting drunk. I'm just having a glass of wine. Would you feel comfortable flying in that? I know I wouldn't. I turned right off that plane. I said, I don't care how not drunk you think you are. If you're driving this vehicle and you're, and you're drinking wine, your, your, your judgment's going to be off and I don't want to be any part of this. And you might say, well, what if I'm just in the privacy of my own home and I just want to drink a wine to end out the week and just have a nice cup of wine to put me in a certain mood. Yahweh's word is supposed to put you in that mood. Yahweh's Rahadah Kodesh is supposed to be putting you in that mood. Not some alcoholic beverage. And it doesn't matter because he can come anytime. Anytime and we have to be up and ready to go. So for all of you out there that are saying it's okay to drink wine and you don't see anything wrong with it and scripture allows it and so on, Say what you say and think what you think. I'm not here to change your mind about scripture. I'm here to change your mind about Yahweh. I'm here to change your mind about what we need to be doing for him. To be ready. To be ready and waiting. You know, to be ready and waiting. And I'm not saying to be ready and drunk or to be ready and buzzed. Ready and waiting. Consistently. Consistently. So that's my message here about wine. And 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 I, I pray... If just one person that drinks wine says, you know what? He's right. And it's not about me being right, you know, but you want to be ready. You want to be ready because we don't know when Yeshua is coming back. We don't know. And, uh, and we also don't know how much we can handle. We don't know when enough is enough. So, I mean, you think uh, uh, getting caught in a drunk driver accident is something bad. Well, what happens when you get caught when y'all comes for that call and you're not around because you're sleeping because you had too much to drink? That's a lot worse than some drunk driving accident which, is, uh, accident, which is bad enough. Nothing good happens when alcohol is out. Nothing. And wine is alcohol. <laughs>